Star Wars has been a huge part of my life since I was just 9 years old. I've seen the 6 movies too many times to count, and I've eagerly awaited and immediately watched every piece of Star Wars media that's come out since I became a fan. Today I thought it would be fun to go through every single Star Wars movie and every single season of all of the Star Wars shows and pick out the best moment from each. I tried to stick to what's currently canon, so as much as I love some of these pieces of Star Wars media, they are excluded from this video. If you like this video, hit that like button. It will greatly help the channel with the algorithm, especially because I don't normally make Star Wars content, so that little push would mean a lot. And if you think the video is worthy of it, please share it with other people. That would be incredibly awesome. Before we get into the video, I want to thank today's sponsor, Own a Saber or OAS. They're a really cool company that makes all sorts of high quality 100% metal lightsabers. These are top of the line products that have all sorts of cool features from changing color to having blaster blocks and even having quotes from the movies built into it. And one of the coolest things about this company is that this July, you can get your lightsaber to come with messages engraved with up to 10 words when you buy the Wrathbearer. You just click the add note section right here before you make your purchase. All lightsabers come with a 1 year warranty, and right now, you get 30% off all lightsabers. And on top of that, if you use code MOVIEFLAME, you get an additional $15 off your purchase. Go check it out, it's all linked down below. It's a really cool company that makes great products, you will not be disappointed. Now that I've said that, let's get the video started. I'm giving you a spoiler warning right now, there are going to be spoilers for all Star Wars content, but I've broken the video up into chapters so you can easily skip over any movies or TV shows that you haven't seen and don't want to be spoiled. The best moment from Vision Season 1 is the lightsaber and hyperdrive combo. When Kare's evil twin sister Am is close to death, he combines his lightsaber with the ship's hyperdrive for the ultimate power. This power gives us an amazing visual as he and his sister connect their lightsabers, and when Kare goes into light speed, it destroys his sister's suit, saving her, and splits the ship in two, much like we saw in The Last Jedi. This scene just has such amazing visuals, and such a unique look at how different powers in the universe can be combined. The best moment from Vision Season 2 is Lola's double-bladed lightsaber. Darkness is your fate. After being told that darkness is her fate by her former master, Lola realizes that she has both the light and the dark in her. Light and darkness are part of the painting. Part of me. And this is shown in the most beautiful animation I think this show has, which is already an incredibly high standard considering how many amazing art styles they have in this show. Lola then pulls out her weapon, and her once single-sided lightsaber turns into a double-bladed saber with both the light and the dark, and she uses it to kill her former master in a very poetic way. I know Sith. The best moment from Tales of the Jedi Season 1 for me is the first time Dooku went dark. After saying that he didn't serve the Senate, but the people of the Republic, You serve the Senate. No, we serve the people of this Republic. During the fight, we see Dooku look at those very people suffering, and we get a close-up of Dooku's face which goes from thinking to angry, and we see the very moment where he decided to go dark. As he force chokes the man, his Padawan Qui-Gon tries to stop him, but Dooku, knowing that what he was doing was wrong, force pushes him away. Dooku tapping into the dark side makes him unstoppable, taking everyone down. Meanwhile, Qui-Gon rushes to ensure his master doesn't take the man's life. Save your father. What? Go now. And only when Qui-Gon touches Dooku's shoulder does he let go, and the look on Dooku's face shows that he was horrified at what he had just done. But this moment shows a theme throughout the show that Qui-Gon was the only thing tying him to the Jedi Order, and later on in the season, once Qui-Gon is gone, that's when Dooku turned to the dark side, all started in the second episode of this season that I think is the best moment. Episode 1 had a lot of cool moments, but the thing that everyone thinks of when they think of this movie is of course the duel where Darth Maul fights Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn. However, when I went into this video, I refused to count just a single lightsaber duel in general as a best moment, because I've already made a video on that. 
For this video, it has to be a specific moment from that fight, and the moment I'm choosing for the Phantom Menace is when Obi-Wan went beast mode. It was a level of lightsaber combat that we had never seen before, and I honestly think that this 10 second clip has some of the best choreographing in the franchise. It was insane to watch this as a little kid, and I still feel the same way even today. But going past just the actual moves and choreography, this moment holds so much emotion to it. Obi-Wan had just watched his master get killed by a Sith Lord, a group of people who he believed to be extinct. The drive we see from Obi-Wan here is pure passion, sorrow, and even anger, which Jedi aren't necessarily supposed to feel, which only adds another layer to this. The best moment from Episode 2 is when the Jedi Knights reveal themselves. Mace Windu comes in, holds a lightsaber to Jango Fett's throat, and he faces Dooku, a man who betrayed him and the Jedi Order, which in itself, like the moment I chose for Episode 1, holds a lot of emotion. These two used to be allies and friends, and Dooku took all of that away for Windu and the rest of the Jedi Order. Then, things get real when all these Jedi Knights reveal themselves in the crowd, showing off some stealth on the Jedi's part, and we have this absolutely insane shot as an army of Jedi charge an army of droids. It takes the whole idea of Jedi Knights to a level that we had never seen before. It was a really special moment for me as a Star Wars fan. I think the best moment in the Clone Wars movie for me was Anakin and Ahsoka's talk after the Battle of Christophsis. This was mere hours after Ahsoka had been assigned to Anakin as his Padawan, and after fighting together for the first time, Anakin says a line that begins this amazing friendship. You're reckless, little one. You never would have made it as Obi-Wan's Padawan but you might make it as mine. It was a really special moment for both of them, as Anakin accepts the role he didn't want to take on solely because it's Ahsoka who he's training, and Ahsoka gets seen for doing something a lot of other Jedi Masters would have looked down upon, and they both realize that this is the perfect Master and Apprentice match they could have gotten. The best moment from Season 1 of The Clone Wars is Heavy Sacrifice. The Domino Squad plays such a huge role in this series, so this moment just carries so much weight when looking at what's to come. It's a really powerful scene too. I know what I have to do! Heavy fights to literally his last breath, making sure he had just enough in him to crawl to the detonation button. I don't. He went out like a true hero, and his sacrifice meant so much as it saved all of Kamino and the clone facility, which in turn saved all of Heavy's brothers, both Kerman and those that weren't born yet. The best Season 2 moment for me was the reveal of Prey Vizsla as the leader of Death Watch. Governor? It was a huge plot twist as he was a trusted ally of Satine's, and he was the one leading the mission to put a stop to the very thing that he turned out to be the leader of. He then gives us some of the best lore the show has to offer as we find out the history of the Mandalorians and also the history of the Dark Saber, one of the coolest weapons in the Star Wars franchise. This lightsaber was stolen from your Jedi Temple by my ancestors during the fall of the Old Republic. It's also very fitting that Vizsla was the one to give us this backstory on the Mandalorians because he was voiced by Jon Favreau who would later go on to create the show The Mandalorian, which we'll talk more about later in the video. The best Season 3 moment of The Clone Wars was Anakin proving that he's the Chosen One. He's told that he can only save one, Obi-Wan, his former master, or Ahsoka, his current Padawan, which in itself holds major stakes. In the process, he's put to the test to see if he can control the brother and sister. The sequence is beautifully animated, and Anakin shows off his true power, coming through and proving that Qui-Gon was right about him. And now you see who you truly are. Only the Chosen One could tame both my children. The best moment from Season 4 of The Clone Wars for me is Obi-Wan and Darth Maul's reunion. And you left me for dead on Naboo. It is you. Seeing Darth Maul return at all was epic in itself, especially considering what scene I chose for Episode 1. It was also fitting to see Obi-Wan just get the hell beaten out of him by Maul and Opress, giving Maul his revenge, the name of the episode in which this takes place. This was a tough one, because there are so many amazing moments from Season 5 of The Clone Wars from Maul decapitating Prey Vizsla, Ahsoka's epic escape, and the battle on Mandalore. However, I decided to go into a different direction than the most action-packed scene, instead going with Satine's death, what I think is the most emotional scene. 
It was something I did not see coming, and is probably the most emotional moment in the entire Clone Wars series. Seeing Maul just savagely sit down on the throne while Obi-Wan holds the love of his life really puts the scene into perspective, and Satine's final words break me every time I watch it. I've loved you always. I always will. It was just executed perfectly, especially with the final shot being Maul smiling at Obi-Wan's pain, giving Maul his true revenge on the man that almost killed him. The best moment in Season 6 for me was Five's final stand. He was desperate to tell everyone the truth about Order 66, but nobody believed him. I'm not crazy! He was manipulated by the Emperor himself, and he went out trying to save his brothers, killed by the very people he was trying to protect. It was also a really fitting send-off for such an important character in the series, as he was part of Domino Squad, who we started our journey with in just the fifth episode of the series. The nightmares. They're finally over. The best moment from the final season of The Clone Wars is the start of Ahsoka and Maul's fight. The window exploding just set the stage for this moment, because as the sparks fly, Maul tells Ahsoka that Anakin is going to be the next apprentice of his old master, adding so much emotion to Ahsoka's eventual attack. He has long been groomed for his role as my master's new apprentice. And the very beginning of the fight is by far the best animated duo we've seen in the show thus far. It was the perfect opening to a very grand lightsaber battle. The best moment in Episode 3 is the ending of Anakin and Obi-Wan's fight. Anakin's arrogance makes him lose the duel, and we have such an emotional back and forth between the two characters that we've grown so close to. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them! And the way the exchange ends is even more heartbreaking. I hate you! You were my brother, Anakin! I loved you! The scene of course ends with Anakin burning, which was the missing puzzle piece of how and why Darth Vader was put into the suit, a puzzle piece that fans had been waiting for for close to 30 years. The best moment from Bad Batch Season 1 is the destruction of Kamino. It was such a monumental moment in the Star Wars franchise, as it not only wiped out the clone facility, but also wiped out the entire population of Kamino, and it later becomes a very important plotline for Season 2. This act also demonstrated how ruthless the Empire really is, as they carried out this heinous act without hesitation. The best moment in Bad Batch Season 2 has to be the Emperor making his appearance. As he enters the political discussion, as always, he manipulates the situation and is multiple steps ahead of everybody who opposes him. He had been trying to pass the bill to remove clones and instead replace them with his own army of stormtroopers. He brilliantly blames Admiral Rampart for the destruction of Kamino, even though it was on his orders. I was following orders! He then uses this as leverage to push the bill of decommissioning the clones forward so he can have his own army. The fact that the clones under his command so blindly followed orders, inflicting such carnage without hesitation. It is time for a change. We shall usher in a new era, heralded by the Imperial Stormtrooper. Also, having Ian McDermott back to voice Palpatine is just the icing on the cake. He's such an amazing actor. The best scene in Solo is when Han flies the Millennium Falcon for the first time. I love that this scene starts with Han asking Lando for permission to fly it, even though they're in danger, and that head nod from Lando gives me chills. Then Han does his thing as he makes the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs, the very thing we heard him talk about in his first ever scene in the franchise. It's the ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. This scene has everything you can ask for, from getting away from a giant monster, Han saying he's going to do something only for that thing not to happen, and we even see him get rid of the escape pod to give the ship its classic look in the front. And of course it ends with Han being very arrogant after ultimately succeeding even though all of the odds were against him. Just did the castle run in 12 parsecs. The best moment in Rebel Season 1 for me is when the Inquisitor commits suicide. 
After a really cool lightsaber battle, it came down to just Kanan and the Inquisitor, and I honestly did not see this coming, making it a very shocking moment for me. His final line, voiced by Jason Isaacs, aka Lucius Malfoy by the way, was just so freaking chilling. There are some things far more frightening than death. Rebels Season 2's best moment was one of the easiest choices on this list. It was when Ahsoka faced Darth Vader and cut open his mask. When she cut his mask open, it forced her to face her old master for the first time since he became Darth Vader. When he speaks, you hear a mixture of James Earl Jones' voice and Matt Lanter's, who voiced Anakin in The Clone Wars. Ahsoka. Anakin. This changes everything, as Ahsoka tells him she won't leave him like she did when she left the Jedi Order. I won't leave you. Not this time. There's a long pause, and you start to think that Anakin will listen, but then we realize how far gone he really is. Then you will die. It was honestly one of the best moments in all of the Star Wars franchise for me, it's just so powerful. The best moment in Rebel Season 3 was Maul and Obi-Wan's final stand. I've already discussed two other moments that involve these two characters, so clearly this relationship is an incredible aspect of the franchise, and this was the wrap-up to their epic story. Obi-Wan only fights Maul when he threatens to go after Luke, which is very fitting. Protecting someone. And when the duel is about to begin, Obi-Wan first does the stance he always did in the prequels, as well as in the Clone Wars. Then he does the classic Alec Guinness pose, and then he goes on to do Qui-Gon's pose, paying homage to his old master. After the short fight that I honestly wouldn't even count as a lightsaber duel, Maul dies in Obi-Wan's arms and says that the boy Obi-Wan is protecting, aka Luke, would avenge both of them. He will avenge us. Which is the perfect send-off for Maul. The best moment in the final season of Rebels is Kanan's sacrifice. He had really come into his own during this episode, cutting off his ponytail, accepting his true name of Caleb Doom, and he finally solidified his relationship with Hera, the woman he loved. That's why him sacrificing himself to save her and everyone else was so much more meaningful than it already would have been. Also, he did it in such an epic fashion, the animation making it look even more incredible. He went out as a true hero, and seeing the reactions of the team made this moment even more emotional. I think the best moment from the first season of this show was the ending of Anakin and Obi-Wan's duel, the same thing I said for Revenge of the Sith. This moment is incredibly similar to the scene with Ahsoka that I talked about earlier, only this time it's James Earl Jones and Hayden Christensen's voice. I am not your failure. Obi-Wan Obi -Wan apologizes to Anakin with tears in his eyes. I'm sorry, Anakin. And Vader has the most chilling answer. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. That smile on his face paired with the tears in Obi-Wan's eyes, it's a very emotional scene. It also very poetically ends the same way their fight on Mustafar ended, as Obi-Wan walks away, leaving the injured Anakin alone in his defeat. The best moment in Season 1 of The Forces of Destiny was Yoda watching Ahsoka's training. Yoda ends up taking over, and he teaches Ahsoka how to rely on her own unique tendencies, which in the end makes her able to counter Yoda's strike, and this pose that she does is something that we saw her do so many times during the Clone Wars. This moment also has an interesting look at how masters and padawans can be different. Learn you should from your master, but take what you learn and make it your own. The best moment from Season 2 of The Forces of Destiny has to be when Ahsoka trained Ezra. She taught him a valuable lesson, showing him that he must rely on the Force and not just his lightsaber. I don't have any way to defend myself. Don't you? Ezra ends up nailing it in the end, and we see Ezra do the exact same thing that Ahsoka did with Yoda in the moment I chose for Season 1, countering the trainer's attack. The best moment from Rogue One is when Vader tried to board Organa's ship. Seeing the red lightsaber bring him out of the shadows was incredible, and the way he takes these guards down was absolutely insane. It is honestly one of the coolest scenes in all of the movies, Vader just slashing and destroying anybody that got in his way. The scene also leads us right into the first ever Star Wars movie, which I think makes it even cooler. 
The best moment from the original Star Wars film is when Han came to the rescue during the Battle of Yavin. After everyone thought he had left for good, both the characters and the audience, Han proved everyone wrong, showing that he was the character we thought he was after all. Han's act then allowed Luke to have a clear shot at the Death Star. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. And he of course uses the Force to do so, giving us one of the most iconic moments in cinema history. The best moment from episode 5 was without a doubt, the easiest choice on this list. It is the iconic moment where Vader told Luke he was his father. I am your father. It was, and possibly still is, the biggest plot twist in movie history. It changed the series forever, it changed cinema forever, and it is honestly one of the most emotional scenes in the entire franchise, especially with Mark Hamill's chilling reaction to this news. For me, the best moment in episode 6 is when Luke refuses to join the Emperor. After cutting his father's hand off while using the inner darkness in him, which in itself was an amazingly powerful scene, Luke realizes that he too has a robotic hand just like his father, and that he could very easily slip down the same path. He takes this to heart and shows that this isn't true, showing an insane amount of bravery, as he not only declares himself as a Jedi, but also his father as well. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. The best moment from The Mandalorian Season 1 is when Grogu stepped up as a hero. He saved everybody during the final fight of the season, using the Force to block the fire. Everyone's disbelief made this even better, and it showed just how powerful Grogu was. I also love how the fire was reflected in the Mando's helmet, and even though he has a helmet on, you can somehow see that he's both surprised and proud. I don't know how they pulled that off. Grogu then absolutely destroys the person coming after them to top off a truly epic scene. The best moment from The Mandalorian Season 2 was Luke's appearance. Seeing his X-Wing fly in made me go, wait, no way. Then when we saw his figure with his hood up, I still didn't believe my eyes. But then when that green lightsaber came out, I got so freaking hype. Seeing a young Luke move the way he did was something really special and was very similar to the way his father moved in Rogue One. Then, when they showed his face and it was a young Mark Hamill, it brought a huge wave of nostalgia for me. It was the perfect way to wrap up this season. The best moment from Season 3 was the Mandalorians taking back Mandalore. First off, they were led by Bo-Katan who wielded the Darksaber, a very meaningful moment given everything that we saw her go through. And it was just so cool to see all of these Mandalorians go head-to-head -head in jetpack combat. It was great action and it had a lot of high stakes as they were literally fighting for their home. On top of that, Bo-Katan, who we have gotten to know so well through the Clone Wars Rebels and now the Mandalorian, has everything to lose here in this fight and she comes through big time as their leader. I think the best moment in Book of Boba Fett Season 1 was Boba killing Cad Bane. They were two of the most badass bounty hunters in the Star Wars franchise, and this show was the first time we saw Cad Bane in live action. The two had a history from when Boba was a kid, which made this mean a lot more. I've known you a long time, Boba. I think they executed this fight perfectly, as there was a ton of emotion behind it, Bane telling Boba that he killed Vanth, an old friend of Boba's. I paid Marshal Vanth a visit. You should have never left him without his armor. And on top of that, Bane was also working for the people that killed Boba's Tuscan family. You mean the one that massacred your Tuscan family and blamed it on a speed bike gang? So there were a lot of stakes behind this fight, and they executed it perfectly, first having Cad Bane get the first shot off, but had Boba come out on top with his lethal combat skills, eventually stabbing Bane in the stomach, putting an end to an incredible character. The best moment from Season 1 of Resistance was Hosni and Prime's destruction. I love how this scene matches up with The Force Awakens with Hux's speech. All remaining systems will bow to the First Order and will remember this as the last day of the Republic. And it made this moment mean so much more as we see Kaz, our main hero's reaction, because this was his home planet. No, my parents. My home. The best moment from Season 2 of Resistance was watching Kylo Ren kill Tyranny. 
This really shows the brutality of Ren, as Tyranny simply asks for reinforcements. But I need reinforcements. To add to your failure? No, I simply need support to- The First Order does not tolerate the weak, Agent Tyranny. And he just goes on to force choke her through the comms, much like his grandfather Vader did in the original trilogy. The best moment from Episode 7 was the first time Rey used the Force to call something to her. They did a great job faking us out, making us think that the lightsaber was coming to Kylo, but it instead comes to Rey, and when the music plays, oh my god, it's spectacular. It's also a moment that pays homage to a scene from Episode 5, as that very same lightsaber was in the snow the first time Luke used the Force to call something to him as well. This parallel only makes this incredible scene even better. The best scene in Episode 8 is Luke's death. He gave his life and showed just how powerful he was, as he used all of his remaining strength to put himself on another planet to fight Kylo just long enough so that everyone else could escape. He then looks at the twin sons, just as he had done right before he started his journey so long ago, bringing his character arc full circle. I know a lot of people don't like what they did with Luke in the movie, but you have to admit, this was the perfect way for him to die. The best moment in Episode 9, in my opinion, is when Rey called on all of the other Jedi. We hear so many different voices from Obi-Wan, both Ewan McGregor and Alec Guinness, to Anakin, Luke, Ahsoka, Kanan, Luminara, Unduli, Mace Windu, Yoda, Qui-Gon, and so many more. Rey. 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 Bring back the balance, Rey. And Rey uses the strength to get up and fight back against the Emperor. I'm all the Jedi. No! This was a tough one because there are so many amazing scenes and such an incredible show but the moment I'm going to go with is the prison break. It was one of the most thrilling, exciting, and inspirational scenes I've ever seen in the Star Wars universe. Their plan was genius with the water shutting the power down, using the prison's own electric floors against itself. We also had a truly amazing speech that sent chills down my spine. There is one way out. Right now. The building is ours. I also love that we don't know what happened to everyone. Can't swim. Everyone else could have very well died, and we'd never know it, making it truly feel like a real prison escape, as we the viewers are from Andor's point of view. And that is the best moment from every single Star Wars movie and season from each show. Again, if you liked the video, hit that like button, and if you think it's worthy of it, share it. I'd also love to know your guys' opinions on my picks, and I'd also love to know your picks. One of the best parts about this franchise is that everybody has different opinions on it, so I'm excited to read what you have to say. That's all I have for you guys this week though, so I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.